What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.2 beta 3 to registered developers just one week after beta 2. And as usual, public beta testers, you guys should see this update very soon. Now, in addition to this iOS release, we also got iPadOS 15.2 beta 3, tvOS 15.2 beta 3, watchOS 8.3 beta 3, macOS Monterey 12.1 beta 3, and HomePod OS 15.2 beta 3. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPad OS 15.2 beta 3 and what's new in the software along with when to expect the final release. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with the size of this update. And you can see here, it came in at 833 megabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. That size, of course, will vary depending on the version you're coming from and the device you're on. So if we go into our settings here to check out the build number, let's go to general about 15.2. And we can see the build number is 19C5044B. So we do have a B at the end of the build number, which does indicate we're actually getting pretty close to the final release. And we'll talk more about that near the end of this video. But if we go down to the modem firmware, you can see that is now 1.32.02. All right, so now what's new here in beta three? And the first thing is actually inside of settings for the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. So if we go to our settings and then down to camera, and then all the way down to the bottom, you can see that it now says macro control. So this used to say auto macro, it's just been renamed now to macro control down here at the bottom. And then also, if we go to preserve settings right here, you can see that it also shows macro control right here as well, where it also used to say auto macro, and also the verbiage underneath has changed as well. So now it says preserve the auto macro setting rather than automatically using the ultra wide camera to capture macro photos and videos. So now that we have a change in the verbiage, it makes a lot more sense what this macro control does because a lot of people would ask me in the comments if this should be on or off. Apple didn't really make it very clear by just saying auto macro. So now it's a lot more clear here inside of settings. Also inside of the Find My application, in the second beta, we had two options right here under items, but now we only have one option and it kind of reverted back to just the simple identify found item. And when you tap on that, it's just going to search for air tags and other items around you. So before and beta two, there were multiple options there to look for, you know, items that may be tracking you, but now it's just back to this one simple option here. So I'm not sure if Apple was just testing that out in the second beta and if they're gonna bring it back later or what, but now we only have this one option here for identify found item inside of Find My. Another new feature here in beta three is inside of the reminders application. So if you go into reminders and then tap on the tags section right here, and if we select multiple tags and then we tap on the ellipsis button up in the top right, you can see that we can now delete multiple tags. So you can bulk delete tags, or you can also bulk rename tags. So you can see this is what it looked like previously on iOS 15.1. You were not able to delete multiple tags at the same time, but now you can here with 15.2 beta three. And then we did also get the communication safety feature set up for kids inside of the messages application. So if you have a profile set up for them in screen time, if we go down here, you can see I have my kid set up right here. Then we have communication safety, and you can see you could check for sensitive photos this all remains on device and nothing has changed here at least not visually in beta 3 because this was in beta 2 as well but i would expect some things to be added to this before it actually gets pushed out to the public with the ios 15.2 release and then as far as new wallpapers or new emojis there's nothing new here in this third beta again we may have to wait until the final release of 15.2 or we may even have to wait until ios 15.3 before we see those new emoji or new wallpapers and it's the same deal with universal control and the new mac os monterey and ipad os so no sign of universal control yet even though apple said it would be here before the end of the year so it's not looking like they're going to keep that promise and may actually come in 2022 at this rate now as far as bugs and bug fixes go if we take a look at the release notes here for this third beta we could see that the streaming in the music app could result in higher cpu usage causing faster battery drain in some scenarios that bug is still remaining here in the third beta that was in the second beta as well i talked about that in that video and then also in my follow-up video on saturday so unfortunately that is still remaining here in beta 3 but hopefully it does get fixed before the final 
rolls out. And then Apple also says users who import a verifiable vaccination record are not able to add it to the wallet application and also the health app may freeze. That is a bug that was also there in beta two and still remains here in beta three. So no real, you know, important resolved issues, just these remaining issues here on the third beta. Hopefully we do see those fixed before the final. Now, as far as performance goes, performance feels about the same as beta two to me, which I really can't complain too much about. The performance has been great on beta two. I would expect nothing less here on the third beta. If we go into the Geekbench scores here, you could see I scored a 1736 on the single core and a 4847 on the multi-core. Compared to beta two, you can see slightly higher in the multi-core, slightly lower in the single core. I will run this test again this weekend once everything finishes processing in the background to see if we actually get a better score than beta two. But so far, even the Geekbench scores are saying that's probably going to be about the same as far as performance goes going from beta two to beta three. And then as far as battery life goes, like I mentioned, we probably will be seeing the exact same battery life, mainly because of that battery drain bug with music still being unfixed in this update. I would still expect that to drain battery a little bit here on this third beta, especially more than 15.1, but I wouldn't expect it to be too much worse than it was in beta two. It may actually even be better. So I will update you guys in my follow-up video this weekend. All right, so what's next for Apple? So Apple just switched over to a weekly release schedule, at least it seems that way. After going two weeks between beta one and beta two, we now have only had one week between beta two and beta three. So with that in mind, we should see iOS 15.2 beta four next week, the week of the 22nd. Now we could actually see an RC as well. So I think it's going to be beta four, but there is the possibility of seeing an RC build of 15.2 next week because we have a B at the end of the build number for beta three, which means we're pretty close to a final and the RC, you know, could have an A at the end of the build number. So it depends, but I would guess that we're going to see a beta four next week and then an RC build the week after, and then potentially a final release of iOS 15.2 on the week of December 6th. So that is my guess. And for those asking about iOS 15.1.1, I mentioned this in my follow-up video. I said that there was really no reason for Apple to release a 15.1.1 because there's really nothing outstanding that really would warrant a release like that but we could potentially see that as well. It's not out of the question. I don't think it's very likely. I've said that all along, but it is a possibility. So that could come really at any point leading up to, you know, the week of December 6th, which is when I would predict iOS 15.2 will release. But again, Apple is extremely unpredictable, especially around this time of year. They could do whatever they want and pull something out of left field. So it's really, you know, everything is up in the air. Everything is possible at this point. But those are just my predictions. And if you guys want to follow more of my predictions and updates, go ahead and follow me over on Twitter. That link is down in the description below. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 beta coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.